Ever since the Book of Boba Fett ended, fans have been wondering if Cad Bane survived. He may have lost the duel with Boba Fett, but his chest lights were still blinking, and so many fans assumed he might not be dead. Well, according to the new Star Wars Timelines reference book, it seems as though Cad Bane may have survived. Here is the excerpt. Beneath the blistering twin suns of Tatooine, Bane returns to fight Boba one-on-one. -on -one. Fett's armor protects him from Bane's shots, but the Duros seems to have the advantage. Resolved to protect his territory, Boba uses the weapon of his Tusken tribe, his gaffy stick, and stabs Bane through the chest, putting the Pike's Hide gun out of action. Some are theorizing the phrasing, out of action, means he's not dead, just temporarily disabled from the fight. Out of action seems to imply temporary dysfunction, not permanent, so if there's a Book of Boba Season 2, and fingers crossed there will be, we might see Cad Bane return, hopefully with Toto 360 to challenge Boba once again. I loved him in the Clone Wars and the Bad Batch, and I'm so glad he appeared in the Book of Boba Fett. From the Desert Comes a Stranger is still my favourite live-action Star Wars episode of anything. Considered one of the best bounty hunters in the galaxy, if he survives, he's gonna be back with a vengeance. It'd be absolutely amazing to see another standoff in a future season. And remember, Bane has a particular hatred for Jedi, so imagine if he comes across Grogu, or even grown up Ahsoka, the tension would be insane. I know she's not a Jedi anymore, but this rematch is something Rosario Dawson has wanted for the Ahsoka show for a long time. Just like with Boba Fett, there is a poetry if an older Ahsoka confronts Cad Bane for whatever reason. I don't know how he'd get involved, I don't think Thrawn would hire him. He already has Balan and Shin, and Cad Bane would stand no chance against Ahsoka at this stage. Cad Bane would never work for Thrawn, or any of the Remnant, he hates the Empire, so if he does come in again, it'll be related to the Syndicates, I don't think he'll be working on the side of the Remnant. And so now guys, onto the Rey movie. According to a new rumour by Jeff Snyder, Daisy Ridley's Rey is not going to be the main character of the 2025 film, she's going to play a supporting role. This is pretty surprising indeed. At Star Wars Celebration 2023, Lucasfilm confirmed that Ridley is making her return to Star Wars as Rey Skywalker, this time as a Jedi Master, in Sharmino Bechanoi's new Jedi Order film in 2025. While speaking on the Hot Mic podcast, industry insider Jeff Snyder shared some surprising information, she's just one in a few that's helping to rebuild the Jedi Order. I repeat, she is not the lead, and he even compared her to being like the Luke or the Obi-Wan of the situation. They say the general consensus over at Lucasfilm is to move away from the Skywalkers, so not having the film center around Rey does make a lot more sense, but considering her standing in the universe at this time, 15 years after Rise, Rey does need to be in the film in some capacity, but as I say, just in a supporting role. The ensemble cast of Young Jedi is going to be new, and it's believed Rey is going to pop in from time to time, but if you assumed, as many of us did, that this was going to be some kind of episode 10, the follow-up film of Rey's adventures after episode 9, it's not. It's a movie in the sequel era that focuses on other Jedi that features Rey. So unlike for J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson's films, Daisy's not going to give all her time to this one. Announcing her as being in the film at Star Wars Celebration may have sounded like she was going to be the lead, but it was just a marketing tactic She's going to be in the film, but it's not a film just about her. This is just a rumour. Share your thoughts on it in the comments down below. Now, just before we move on and talk about the Andor show, on Thursday, it's Star Wars Day. May the 4th, we have Visions Volume 2, Young Jedi Adventures, some announcements from Hasbro the day before, but I will be giving you my honest thoughts on Visions Volume 2, we'll do a review, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. And so now, my dear friends, Andor star Diego Luna was sceptical over how well Season 1 went, saying, quote, this is too perfect. Just like a lot of Star Wars fans before the show dropped, we didn't expect it to be this good. I was saying for months and months, do not sleep on the Andal show, and boy did it deliver. Season 2 comes out next year, and fans are so excited. Our faith is well placed in Tony Gilroy. Now having said that, it is a particular flavour of Star Wars which is very different to The Mandalorian and other shows. It was called a spy thriller, but it's also a drama. The dialogue was fantastic, and while it didn't bring the kind of Star Wars that involves tons of lights sabers, connections to the Skywalkers, it still was a fantastic story and perfect for its genre. According to The Hollywood Reporter, it even surprised the man himself, Diego Luna. When he was told, a year or two after Rogue One, that they were going to make a series about Cassian Andor, he didn't know what to expect. And now when all is said and done, and he's filming for season two, the actor says the cast and crew are not resting on their laurels after the strong response from the fans to season one. And Luna is not afraid to admit he never thought Andor would see the light of day. He didn't think Disney would ever approve of this, and even if it did, he didn't expect it to have such a strong fan reaction.
reaction. Here is the quote. I always had a feeling that this was not going to see the light of day till it did. I kept going, this is too perfect. This is working. So everything just kept getting better and better. And I always had the feeling that something had to go wrong, but it didn't. We had the freedom and the support of Disney and Lucasfilm. Now it is worth pointing out the Andor show and or season one was an anomaly. The fact Tony Gilroy had this much freedom to tell the story he wanted is a rarity. Usually Disney would water something like this down, especially with overt political messaging. It was so prominent about revolution, rebellion, and putting a stick in the eye of the empire in the eye of fascism. Between the character of Luthan, some of the incredible monologues by him, Nemec and Marva, that was really something that resonated with the audience, something Diego Luna didn't expect to see the light of day and get approved. But amazingly, Tony Gilroy was given free reign. They trusted his vision. And I love that. This is what happens when you give all of the power to a creative who has a vision and a story to tell without much interception creatively from higher ups. That was the key to why Andor had such positive feedback. Now, unfortunately, it did suffer in terms of viewership, but I'm really keeping my fingers crossed that season two with its supposed connections to Rogue One and more of a classic familiar Star Wars feel, that views will go up, especially in retrospect, a lot of fans between now and then will be rewatching season one or discovering it for the first time after Mando. It really deserves success. Look at all the awards it got nominated for. They say Luna is currently shooting season two of Andor here in England. And while the season one finale ended with Cassian Andor offering his life to the rebellion, he still has a ways to go before he becomes one of the brave rebel heroes in Rogue One. He says he wants to be part of the rebellion, but I'm not sure if he knows what that means yet. He's basically saying, I want to speak the language, but now he has to learn it. And so now it's going to take longer. We're going to go for four years in season two. And and when we find him, he's so far away from where we left him at the end of season one. He's basically the guy to trust for something like that mission. And Diego says that he and Tony Gilroy do not regret not doing five seasons. Two is perfect. They've trimmed the fat. It's just the meat and potatoes condensed into the parts that matter. When he's asked the question, he says, no, definitely not. We managed to make the series we made because we took the time we needed. The thought of making five seasons, I would probably be 54 and still doing this. So it'd be impossible to pretend tend to be the guy before Rogue One for such a long time, and to be honest, it's such an intense journey, it's fantastic, but it's so intense. And it's so great to know that we can give everything to it and by the end, still have something else to give to other projects and to life. So in many ways, Diego Luna is glad it's just two seasons so that he still has the physical and emotional energy to maintain that role. Doing five seasons would have been too much. And if as an actor you find a story becomes too tired, you lose interest, you no longer care as much as you once did, that really does translate on screen. Every performance in the Andor show, be it Cassian Andor himself, Diego Luna, Genevieve O'Reilly as Mon Mothma, Elizabeth Dulau, Forrest Whitaker, Stellan Skarsgård, they were so convincing. You were captivated by the story if that's your kind of thing. And it's certainly was my flavor of Star Wars. When pinpointing a specific scene he loved, he talks about the Death Star construction in the post credit scene. Did chills go down your spine when you learned that Cassian helped build the Death Star that would ultimately kill him? And here's the response. Yeah, they did. I had time to digest that because I'm also involved as a producer, so I had a chance to see it coming. But it's one of those ideas that's just brilliant. It's also not obvious. He spent quite a long time living the experience of that prison without finding out, and it allows you to wonder, holy Shit. what are they building? Could this be? One of the many things the show has is very patient writing. There are great ideas that come with patience. So it's very mature writing that was one of those reveals where you're like, shit, that's so smart. But share your thoughts on this and everything we spoke about in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one. May the force be with you always.